Now, I also want to talk a bit about what analysts are saying, you know, that they, like in, even IDC, you know, they claim that a uh, majority of IT spend on AI will shift from experimenting and training LLMs to AI powered applications. Now, I would also like to hear from you is how would you define AI powered applications? An AI powered application is really something that can make use of um, effectively a, a real time engagement where you wouldn't have to hardwire it ahead of time. So if we think about, you know, the way that people want to use co-pilots, you don't necessarily know everything that somebody might ask a co-pilot, but you can train it in a certain way that it can be specialized to answer a certain type of, of question or to follow a certain line of thought. So for example, like people worry all the time about hallucinations and is AI going to be giving me all sorts of random information that's not true. The way that you, one way that you can combat hallucinations is by training an AI, an AI narrowly in a given discipline. So I might have a co-pilot that only knows how to answer questions for uh, people who are looking to do business development in high tech or IT, where the focus is uh, cybersecurity and the sort of application of cybersecurity is endpoint protection. That'll give me a very narrow set of criteria that I can follow in order for whatever my co-pilot would provide you to stay on the rails, so to speak, and not start pulling from a body of knowledge and providing answers that are outside of its scope. Now that can be changed and applied in all manner of different ways. People might apply you know, co-pilots or other AI for gaming use cases. They may apply it for uh, personalized shopping. They may do it for the way that you might want to get preference for your travel itineraries or, or how you would engage with a hotel when you're on site. So there's all sorts of ways that you can think about training these AI powered applications. And the AI part is really going to be down to whatever that interaction is between a user and an application. So if the user is, is expecting to use the application to, to, to receive customized, let's say, uh, goods that they might be interested in, then you're going to train your large language model based on your inventory, based on your user sentiment and the cohorts of users that you have so that you understand how people typically engage with your brand, how people typically would buy maybe the first product and extend to other goods and services over their lifetime with you. And then that would be applied in the context of, let's say, a mobile application where you would be prompted as a user to say, you know, how are you feeling today? Or what is, you know, are you interested in any of our sales that we might be promoting at the moment? And then you can take a user through a journey based on their interactions, the, the prompts that they provide back to the application and a fairly, you know, you can call it narrow, but not, not meticulously defined path that the user would follow in that application. So you have a constrained amount of data that is going to be in, engaged with in real time, but you haven't defined you know, what the starting point and the ending point is with all of the stops along the way. That's where the AI and the inference can start to engage with whatever the user prompts it with. And then depending on what's, what's in your large language model, whether that's your inventory, your sales, uh, things that are applicable to a given user based on their profile or their demographic, you would then match that data and those decisions up in real time as the user engages.